need a little self-esteem boost, so thank you very much. I have to say to Gail, I do remember that conversation, and you know, here we are three years later, and you know, you and your team have clearly knocked it out of the park. So congratulations. This is a, a great event and wonderful to be here. Um, it, it, it's tough to get um, it, it feel excited or happy about anything, given what's going on this week. Um, but at ESPN, I think we're mildly pleased that Cleveland has forced a game six. So go Cleveland. Um, uh, Kelly Abkarian yesterday uh, remembered something I said um, in terms of measurement being a team sport. And uh, let me bring up a slide here. In terms of measurement being a team sport, um, and it's important for media companies, agencies, advertisers to work with the measurement companies out there to sort of inspire and force and support innovation in our business. And uh, we're going to talk a lot of, of why that is so important today. Um, my team here, Barbara and Chris, are going to help me out in a little while um, in terms of demonstrating what we're doing to uh, illuminate the path forward for uh, uh, cross-platform measurement and cross-platform in insights for our advertisers. And so, th so this whole idea of it being a team sport is important between sort of the media company and the advertiser and the agency as well. This is a collaborative partnership. We have to work together because we know about as much about our media as anybody's going to know. It's no longer going to be in the hands of third-party uh, measurement companies. Uh, so we need to share as much as we can. But before I get into this, before we talk about how we're illuminating that path for our advertisers, I want to talk a little bit about the genre that we play in, which is the world of sports, because what's happening in sports is sort of indicative of the shift, the dramatic change in behavior that we're seeing in media overall. So in 2015 last year, 229 million Americans watched sports on national television in the average month almost 80% of the population. So the reach of, tel of sports television is significant. And, but the real significant change that we're seeing is that in 2015, 93 of the top 100 live viewed television programs in the United States were spo was sports programming. 10 years ago, it was just 14 out of the top 100. And so what you're seeing now is with the fragmentation of television and the ability to virtually time shift every, anything, and everything is being time shifted for you in terms of scripted television, essentially sports has moved to the top of the list in the repertoire of choice for live television viewing. But it doesn't stop in television. The need to engage and be part of breaking news real time, following my events on the, on the best available screen wherever I can, the need to be in the moment in sports, has made it sort of the uh, quintessential cross-platform genre, and ESPN clearly has been the beneficiary of that. This is Project Blueprint data from Comscore. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but uh, September is a good month for that, I'll, for us. I'll admit that. It's a great multi-sport month. Kind of everything is happening between baseball, football, college football, et cetera. But we reached 203 million people, adults, uh, if you will, in that month, which is significant. And you could see how, and this is, this is including reach, unduplicated reach across all of our platforms, television, all the digital platforms, and radio or audio in this case, 108 million males. Um, but the important thing about this from an advertising perspective is that on any given day, 85% of the people who were engaging with ESPN were engaging on, in just one platform. It was either television, which is clearly the biggest, 23% digital only, 8% radio only. Just 15% on any given day was multi-platform. So understanding this dynamic is critically important because if we believe in things like the recency theory, and you've heard a lot about what the ARF has shared in terms of performing in all platforms, the great work that they've done with their ground truth experiments, and how advertising works today, this is one of the reasons why we need this type of measurement, why advertisers need to know that you have to be on all platforms, otherwise you're missing the point, you're missing uh, valuable touch points. And digital, as you can see here, is a huge driver. And digital has been changed in our space completely by the advent of mobile and the significant growth of mobile, which is generating reach faster than it ever did before in that space. And it means now that it is no longer just multi-platform, it is about multi-place in our world. So what's happening today is that mobile sports, sports mobile web or app usage has actually increased 30% over the last year. 
Uh, this is continuing to grow, so basically the ubiquity of being connected, the ability to be connected any place, any time for avid sports fans, you know, their wish has essentially come true. And it's changing how our fans stay in touch with us. It's changing how our fans specifically consume news and information. And let me give you a specific example of this. On April 25th, um, the news broke uh, that the appeal for Tom Brady um, to, uh, to, uh, against his, his suspension uh, was turned back um, and uh, for Deflategate, for deflating footballs in the AFC Championship game in 2015. Um, and you can see what happened here. What we, went, what we did is we went back and we sort of looked at the hour by hour breakout of when, uh, soon after that, that, that news broke. And ESPN did send an alert, a breaking news alert, uh, to all of our registered users, millions of users. And you can see what's happened here. TV is in the blue. This is the, the, uh, the unique viewers or users. And red is digital, primarily dri driven by mobile in this case. And you could see the significant advantage that digital had in terms of delivering that news uh, to our fans nationwide. Um, it was just a few years ago when we didn't believe that digital could actually surpass television in terms of reach, and now in fact it's happening. It's this ubiquity of mobile that's causing this. And then on top of that, if we break this down using the common measure of average minute audience, we can see the significant lift that digital uh, built over television in terms of delivering that news and information. So this is the change in our business, and this is why it's important. The fundamentals here is important for us to share as we do with our advertisers so they under, understand the dynamics of this. And the fact of the matter is that, uh, that media is, in fact, multi-platform, and you have to be in, in all these platforms to take advantage and deliver that reach. So Erwin Efron, who we honor at this conference, obviously, said many great things, um, and one of the things that he had said is that we use different platforms because they do different things. And this is one thing that we are acutely focused on at ESPN, uh, trying to educate our advertisers in terms of what those things are. And Chris and Barbara are gonna talk about that a little bit in terms of the insights that we provide. And I love this quote, he also said that reach is media's gift to marketing. And I think we have to remind our marketers of that. But reach is also sort of a rare commodity these days. Assembling reach is harder than it's ever been before. Uh, and so we have to, again, advise our advertisers how we can do that for them by making use of all of these, of all of these platforms. Again, it's not just multi-platform, it's multi-place. So to get to this place, some of you remember, uh, about six years ago at Rethink, uh, we launched uh, ESPN XP. Uh, which was our sort of branded initiative to force us to move cross-platform measurement from special project to standard practice and to influence, you know, essentially the marketplace to do so. I just didn't think it would take six years, but I'm optimistic. There's a lot of great things happening with a lot of great companies in this room. Now, uh, at that time, it was just focused primarily on measurement, and uh, we did a, a great pilot study around the World Cup in 2010. Uh, and then 2012, later on, worked with Comscore and Arbitron to form Project Blueprint, which I think was, has been a great instigator in terms of moving us forward and something we use uh, for our insights. But we have since sort of expanded what we do with our advertisers, uh, more of a surround strategy uh, to add more gusto, if you will, in terms of the knowledge that we provide, not only for ourselves, but also to advise our clients in this, in this team effort. So ESPN XP is up there on the top. And this is about the measure of the audience, uh, putting as much as we can into that toolbox, using the best measures of cross-platform and individual platforms to truly understand what's happening in the world of television, digital, and audio, um, and soon over the top, obviously, a big area of focus for us. And then we combine that with a great understanding of the required mix. Okay, getting back to Efren, the mix is very, very important. Um, and ESPN XPE was born about three, three, four years ago, thanks to these people here um, with, their, uh, with their creativity and innovation. And here we're taking the best measures from XP in terms of understanding reach and duplication of our audiences. And this is combined with a proprietary survey of ad effects across platforms, which is in the field each and every day, so that we can then model the effects of advertising on ESPN across platform and actually uh, produce uh, media mix optimization, which Chris is going to give you a tour of a great new tool uh, that we've, uh, we've established to do that. And then finally, we've got our lab in Austin, Texas, the ESPN lab run by Dwayne Veron. And this is all about understanding the nuances, the whys to the what, how does creative work 
which creative works best than others, and understanding the cross-platform effects. Helping to understand that question is what is it, what's different about the things that media does, that advertising does on these different platforms? Uh, again, uh, to take an, uh, an Ephronism, if you will. At the end of the day, we've been doing this now for a few years, what we know, and here we have sort of normative data over the last 35 months uh, across 24 different advertisers in different categories. It's very, very simple. There is a dramatic incremental effect to advertising across platforms. Something you saw yesterday from the ARF research team in their work in, in, uh, for how advertising works today. And that being said, um, we applaud the work that they are doing. Um, it brings validity to the work that we have seen. Um, I think a combination will be able to learn more. And I think more importantly, what the work that the ARF has done has demonstrated that this is about art and science. And I don't think we, need, we, have to, we can't forget about the science that, behind, that is behind understanding how advertising works. And one of the things that the, that the, uh, that the Advertising Research Foundation did as part of their analysis um, is this, uh, this analysis of uh, 3,200 campaigns from 2010 to 2015, um, proving again, in retrospective, that, more, that multiple platforms is better than one. And yet what you see here in the yellow is that we still have the vast majority of, of advertising campaigns today, about 60%, that are still limited to just one or two platforms. Right? And this is a missed opportunity as far as we're concerned. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to turn over to Mr. Chris Barton, who's going to take you through what we've been doing with ESPN XPE to demonstrate this effect. Thank you very much, Artie. Um, yeah, so as Artie mentioned, this is Lace from ESPN XPE. So this is our cross-platform initiative to look at the effects of exposure on advertising. And what I'm going to share with you today is a little bit different um, than what we've shown in the past because for the first time, we're actually informing our modeling work with data from Project Blueprint, which is our initiative with Comscore to passively measure cross-platform usage. And that's a big deal because in the past, we, we simply relied on self-reported data uh, to identify cross-platform usage. And this is really the first time uh, that we've been able to uh, use Project Blueprint data to identify actual reach and duplication rather than random or estimated duplication. So we really believe this is the most accurate view we've had to date of total market effectiveness. So what we're gonna share today is a dashboard. Um, and you can see that basically what we've asked uh, the model in this case is that over a four week period, what is the potential for each one of these platforms to lift the certain KPI? So in this case, the KPI we've selected is awareness. Um, and you can see on the right that the, um, the platform we selected in this case is linear TV. Um, and you can see that the, the model is essentially telling us that over the four week period, uh, TV has the potential to raise that metric by a potential of 20%. Uh, now when we add platforms to this, you're gonna see that bar on the left increase with different types of exposure. Um, and you're gonna see in the middle that the, the, the potential lift in the middle is gonna be the aggregate effect. So it's essentially gonna add up the ones on the left. Um, what's also interesting though is on the right, we can see the effectiveness to reach ratio. So this is really uh, designed to get an, uh, to really understand what's gonna go on in terms of an individual exposure. Um, and we can see that um, in this case, linear TV has got a 0.89. So it's essentially asking what is a platform contributing to total effectiveness versus what is contributing to total reach. So we can see what happens when we add a platform. So we see we add display advertising, and you can see that it uh, lifts uh, the total potential to raise the metrics, which is awareness, uh, by 11.2%, um, which is a 55% lift over TV alone. Uh, and then on the far right, you can see that display is contributing roughly the same amount to total uh, effectiveness as it's contributing to total reach. If we add VOD, we can see a different story where uh, it's, again, adding 4.1% to total uh, to the, the potential to raise total awareness, um, which is a total potential lift of 35%, or a uh, 2.3 effectiveness to reach ratio. So this is very important to us because it, it really uh, illuminates the fact that an individual exposure is a bit, bit more impactful on VOD. And that's important because it really corroborates what we've seen in other research that it's, there's an experience when you choose the video um, and you interact with it on a mobile device, it tends to be a bit more effective. And Barbara's gonna talk more about that in a little bit. 
And then if we ask, add live streaming, we can see a difference. So this is our Watch ESPN product. And you can see that it too has a potential to raise awareness by an initial 1.4%. So overall, it's got a potential to raise awareness by 83% over TV alone. Um, that's an aggregate of 37% overall. Um, and you can see there that the effectiveness to reach ratio is 1.34, um, which actually makes a lot of sense to us too because it's kind of the combination between VOD and TV. So watch ESPN, it's a digital experience, but in reality, you're, you're consuming it more like a TV product, so for it to fall in the mix makes a lot of sense as well. So that's one metric, so that's awareness. I mean, if we switch to another metric, it's uh, interesting to see the differences. So we switch to purchase intent, it's a much different story. So here you can see that the digital properties are playing a much larger role uh, in terms of what we see of driving a separate KPI. Um, and you can see there, especially you look at VOD and live streaming at those effectiveness to reach ratios are extremely uh, high compared to the, to the rest of them. Um, so we just think this is an interesting example. You know, one, obviously, um, you know, we think it's an improvement over how the, met uh, the methodologies we're using to evaluate total market effectiveness. Uh, but we think it's a great takeaway because we think it really reinforces a lot of the ARF ground truths. Um, so with that, um, we're gonna turn it over to Barbara Singer who's gonna talk more about that. Thank you, Chris. So on our path of cross-platform learning, we really do need to stop all of us and consider those three rings that Artie described. The audience measurement, the mix, and now more than ever, the message. And I think we've talked a lot about that. I was, I was very excited yesterday to hear so much talk about creative. It really feels like the next part of our frontier. Chris shared with you, in terms of the mix um, from XPE, how our ESPN platforms work together for ad impact. We know over and over again that we see one platform plus another platform equals something greater than two. I'm gonna share a little bit more on that from the ESPN lab, as well as from a new approach we took using passive, um, a passive data approach. And then we'll talk about that third ring a little bit um, the messaging part. In a study we did in the lab, we wanted to line up television next to the digital screens in kind of the ultimate video showdown. The lineup included TV, linear TV, OTT, PC, and mobile. Was there a loss in communication fidelity from screen to screen? No. Across all screens, ad impact remained fairly constant. What we did see is that OTT had similar results to linear television, something we saw from Chris's research in XPE, um, that those are behaving very similarly. We also see that the digital screens, including mobile, outperform the television screen on many regards, including this one, brand recognition. In another approach, this was our, our new work we did um, in partnership with iSpot and also with our internal team that manages our registered fan database. We were able to, for the first time, collect passive exposure data for both digital and TV in the same household. In our initial study of looking at tune-in, trying to drive tune-in to the college football playoffs, we saw that in the households that were exposed to both TV and to digital, those households tuned into the games at a 21% higher rate than those households that were only exposed on TV. There it is again, media mix rules. So where should we go next on our journey? Messaging, and specifically here. Mobile, the very smallest stage is quickly becoming the largest attraction. In every year in our sports poll, we ask fans, what's your first source for sports information? And this year, across all of our ESPN touch points, the one in the top was ESPN on a mobile phone. So mobile has our fans' attention. It really needs our attention to make sure that it's going to be a very strong 
advertising platform. To get the ball rolling, we did another study in the lab, this one specifically on mobile, and all we wanted to do is see if there was a difference in the user's reaction to video when they got to choose a video versus something that was just simply fed to them. And indeed, this is what we found out. By a metric intensity, which is really a measure of engagement, was higher in the choice condition, and viewers said that they enjoyed the content more. Those are great clues as to the fact that this is going to be a very powerful platform for advertising as well. Viewers are in the moment in mobile. Those results also help us inform what we found in another study, which was that ad impact occurs in milliseconds in mobile. Eye gaze actually occurs in 500 milliseconds on a mobile ad. Ad fix eye fixation can occur faster in a scrolling environment on mobile than it does on PC. And 36% of people had ad recall after only 500 milliseconds of exposure on mobile. It's a very powerful medium. And just imagine if we actually optimized the messaging that took place in those 500 milliseconds and beyond. We've made great strides on audience measurement. We want to keep that momentum going for sure. We've definitely demonstrated that the mix is the way to go when you want to get ad effectiveness. We've seen it through the ARF ground truth experiments, through survey research, through lab research, and now with our passive research. The elusive area of messaging has to be next, especially in mobile, looking at new content, at formats, at different models, to figure out the best way to go there. This is really the way that will illuminate the path that connects consumers and brands in the most powerful ways moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara and Chris. And so I'll reiterate again that uh, not only is measurement a team sport, but understanding how advertising works across our platforms will be a team sport. And you can learn more from us in the future uh, at ESPN.